LKCMV. Hey, Sarah. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I'm a little late. I don't know. It's okay. I'm always cropping stuff and, and then downloading stuff anyway. Como estas? Uh, bien. ¿Y tú? Estoy muy bien. Okay. I have um, something I'm going to share with you. It's just a little checklist I made. Okay. Um, for It's actually for another student who was really struggling with the preterite versus the imperfect. Okay. But I think it's useful for anybody that's doing the preterite, at least that part of the checklist. And then later we could always take a look at the imperfect part of it. Okay. Okay. Um, why we're, let's start with the preterite. Okay. La semana pasada fuiste a donde? Uh, la man, uh, la, okay. Uh, la semana pasada, um, we uh we took me trabajo oh a donde uh is uh está en uh una pueblo uh se llama littleton colorado si sí. i tengo una alumna cat uh tammy que vive in little littleton pero ah. La semana pasada no fue por las armas. ¿Qué es las armas? Armas, armas. There was something that happened. I don't know exactly. With some guns. Oh, and la mania, la mania. Oh, and ah, uh, and ah, uh, mucho años pasado. No, 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 no. Yo sé, yo sé que you know, little in Colorado, pero. Like maybe it was two weeks ago. Something happened and they had shut down some of the schools. Oh, see. Sí. Um, uh, uh, and uh, dos semanas pasadas. Uh, dos semanas pasadas. Okay. Uh, um, fui mm -hmm. una mujer que... Uh, que... Um, Yeah, um, let's see. Uh, una mujer, no un estudiante? No, no fue, well, fue uh, un est estudiante de um, Florida. Oh. Pero, uh, 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 vivo aquí. Vi vive, like now she lives there? No, vivo uh, dos semanas pasado. Uh, uh, vivo in Florida antes de, uh, ah, de, de, okay. Okay. Um, no, vivi, vivia in Florida antes de vivo aquí. Uh, okay. So ella se mudó a Colorado? 
Sí. Ok, pero no entiendo el problema. El problema, el problema fue um, este, mujer, este estudiante, esta mujer, uh, ella um, tuvo 18 años. ¿Ella tenía 18 años? Sí, yeah, bueno, well, es, es muerte. Oh, oh. Um, so oh. ella, um, That's super gross. ella fue aquí, fue, no. It depends on, are you trying to say she came here? Sí. Ella vino aquí. Okay, ella vino aquí y, um, uh, let's see, uh, ¿qué es la imperfecto? Decir, decir, decir. Decía. Y ella decía, ella va a... Um, uh, shoot. Va a desparar. Va a desparar oh. muchos estudiantes, pero ella no... Uh, no uh, no disparó. She didn't say which one. Oh, well, no dijo um, cuál. No, um, so, mm. so that would be. Let me write it for you. I don't know why I'm not finding this, but I, I know where sí. I have it. No, dijo, it would be dijo. Ella no, well, I am, it depends. Because if she was saying, if she was saying, I'm going to shoot someone, I'm going to shoot someone, I'm going to shoot someone, it would be decía. Like she kept saying it. No, she, she just said it and came. Okay, so she said it one time. This is kind of the point of this this uh, checklist. Right, no, yeah, it's yeah, cool. no, it's good. Um, ella I'm, dijo. I'm just having trouble que, with this here. Ella dijo que iba a disparar desper, okay. a alguien. O sí. a, en una escuela? No, um, uh, uh, algunos no, um, no, uh, la policía no sé, la pi policía la no policía. sé exactamente dónde fue. Okay, no sabían, they didn't know. Yeah, no sabía, okay, no sabía. No sabían exactamente, no sabía la policía exactamente dónde. Hmm, so... Ella me dijo, mi, mi alumna, que cerraron todas las escuelas. Sí, sí, porque uh, la policía no sé cuál, uh, no, no, no si sabían, ha, no sabía uh, cuál, cuál escuela ella uh, iba a disparar. Iba, sí, ella iba, sí, ok, iba. Get it. I can't find this on my computer for some reason. I know it's on there, but it's just quicker sometimes to go through here. But it's exactly why I made this because I was <laughs> thinking, how can I simplify and just make it really, really simple? So I kind of made a thing to ask yourself, can I put an exact time on this? Can I say, you know, on June 1st, 1987? If you can, it has to be preterite. Right. It has to be. So I made it like that. Like, it's not all of the little exceptions, of course, because there's always exceptions. Here it is. But I think if it's, it's a regular, I do well. If it's a regular verb, but if yeah. it's like the seer, where it's, then the I can't whole, always. The, the stem changes in the preterite. So I need to, I need to learn that one. Yeah, let's, we'll grab those too. Um, but I think this will help you. I, I'm actually give, I gave it to my students that are just learning the preterite just so they know why I'm going to say tenia diez años. Okay. So it's really, even if you don't know the imperfect, you still have to be aware why some people are going to say this to you, right? Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that it helps because it gets really tricky because it can be the it can be the imperfect like it depends what she's on saying the situation. it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she's saying it multi she was saying it over and over and over 
I unfortunately had a friend, she killed herself a couple weeks ago, but she was saying it for years. So nobody, you know, kind of became, oh yeah, mm -hmm. you know, she's saying it again. Almost no, not almost, nobody believed her. And she did actually do it. So that would be a case where Eudicea for años. Mm -hmm. um, it's very sad. Very, very sad. So this is what um, we can focus on. Okay, so okay. you want to ask yourself, did it happen at an exact time? So, Nasi, I was born. That's a very exact time that that happened. But anytime um, you can put a day, an hour, a, uh, a year, it's an exact time. Okay. Was it one time? Um, wait, I'm going to try to get my, for some oh. reason I lost my, are you on, you're on the Spanish course? Oh, I wasn't sharing with you. Sorry. I thought I was sharing with you. There I am. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so this is the first one, the preterite. Uh, did it happen at an exact time? And then just one example, but it could be, you know, many exact times. You know, uh, Navidad fue en diciembre. Could be a month. It could be a year. It could be a season but where you have that kind of closed time. Okay. Was it one time? Fuimos a California, el año pasado. If it's more than one time, the reason is because it will likely be in the present perfect. You'll likely say, uh, hemos ido a California muchos veces. Or if it's something that was a habit, that's where you would go to the imperfect. But that's why that one time is kind of important because if it's not one, there's other tenses that are better. Okay. Yes, you could say fuimos a California cinco veces. It's just, mm. it's gonna sound a little off. Okay. You know, it's not gonna sound perfect, but it's gonna get the point across. It's a okay. series of events in the past. If you have some, you know, this happened and then this happened and then this happened, it's always going in the preterite. Okay. I just said, me cociné, me bañé, y me vestí, but it could be 50 things. Okay. Did it interrupt another action? These are the two where it starts to get fuzzy because I have the dot, dot, dot here because that other action has to go in the imperfect. The interrupting action goes in the preterite. Y de repente encontré la gata. So in my head, it's something like, oh my God, I was looking for the cat in the house all day and suddenly I saw her outside. Mm, okay. So that was looking part, the longer action is going to go in the imperfect. Okay. And the other fuzzy thing is, was it a reaction? So if you have an emotion, it typically goes in the imperfect, you know, I loved my childhood dog, loved my dog, still love my dog, but I really loved it when I had it. But if I found something out and I got mad or it was a surprise party or happiness, it's going to go in the preterite. Okay. Don't expect you to, to, remember these all right now but i figured we could kind of focus on one each class okay so i but i'm a little confused so amos ido mm -hmm. so that's the nosotros form we have been to california many times so ido what form what this is called the present perfect and um this is for things that happen more than once in the past and it's leaving possibility that you might go in the future, even if you don't say it. Yeah, okay. This is used like, have you ever, have you ever eaten sushi? Have you ever been to, have you ever gotten married? Mm -hmm. you know, have you ever had a child? Uh, have you ever seen this tense before? That's a good question. Yeah. I, well, I have, I, 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 this thing I'm still having problems with is the um, irregular verbs. Okay. Or the irregular, yeah. So what I'm trying to figure out is, okay, so if, if- How did I form this? If I said we have been talking to each other many times, hemos, um, how would you say talking? Well, you, you want to say talked, hablado. Hablado. Yeah, but that's just, that's not this form, right? That's not the you hemos want the, form. You want the 
It is, it is, but let me show you two things oh, okay. without scaring you. <laughs> Hemos hablado muchas veces. Okay. The way that you said it was the present perfect continuous. We have been talking. Hemos estado hablando muchas veces. Okay. Okay. Um, it's so Amos, uh, Amos of Lando is we had been talking. Yeah, no? we had talked many had times. Talked. Okay. We had okay. talked. That was sort of an aside, but I just wanted to, I was just confused. No, 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 it is really confusing because it's so many, there's so many options. We have <laughs> been talking many times. Okay. Okay. Actually, I probably put here for a long time because this is indicating a continuous thing that's going on. I would probably say por mucho tiempo. Okay. It's kind of the difference between saying, you know, in the English, we say the, pre we say the present continuous more often in English. We say, you know, I'm living in Colorado, I'm working at the hospital, I'm seeing a new guy. We use it for everything where they don't in Spanish. Okay. It's, it's very limited in Spanish. Got it. Okay, cool. Okay, so preterite and imperfect. So right now for the imperfect, we're not going to concentrate on all of them. I just want to concentrate first until you feel comfortable on giving times. Okay. And you're going to say, what the heck? You just told me if I can put a time on it, it goes in the preterite. I'm a, I know, I'm sorry. But it's different because if the time is vital to the action, it happened at that time, it's the preterite. If you're describing, and this is where it comes into like storytelling, you're describing the scene and the time is really just a background, it's the imperfect. Okay. So for, I like to think of this as, Active, everything preterite is an action. Everything is active. I got angry. You know, I was, um, I surprised myself. Uh, I, I cooked, I got a shower and everything in the imperfect is passive. It's all description. Okay. It was Tuesday. Well, Tuesday didn't really do anything. It just was Tuesday or it was nighttime. So if you okay. try to think of it that way, it's very, very helpful. Okay. And I do have some amazing exercises if you want to practice them. Okay. Yes. Yes. That'd be great. Do you want to do it now? Um, sure. Yeah. Okay. Or either, either way, but yeah. No, no, no. I just I have this great website that I love it because it, it explains to you why you're right or wrong and it just drills it into your head. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, because if you know why, you're less likely to repeat that mistake. Right. Um, I love this website. I just wish there was more of it. So why don't we read about Goldilocks? Because it's storytelling. This is really when it starts to become storytelling. Um, so even when you're telling someone, if I tell you what happened over the weekend, I'm telling a story, right? Okay. So I might describe yes. to you. I went to my husband's family's house. I might tell you how the house was, how the party was decorated. That's all going to be imperfect. So this is going to be Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Uh, so you already know kind of how the story goes, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we have to choose between the preterite or the imperfect. The preterite's first. The imperfect is second. And then it's going to tell us either way why we're right or why we're wrong. Okay, all right. So the first one is a bear. Right. Hubo so, or había una vez? Había una vez. Why is it había? Because uh, there was at one time, like it was ongoing? No? It wasn't ongoing because it was one time, but if you go here, <clears throat> remember that time, they're setting this scene. Once upon a time. Is the, is the English translation of Avia una vez. Okay. So there's no action. They're just setting the scene for the story. Okay. So I click here. It's going to say, good. It's okay. imperfect oh. because it's a description. Okay. 
What's it say next? Okay, once upon a time, uh, there were three bears. Yep. Who, okay. Um, Vivian and El Bosque. Why Vivian? Uh, because um, it's this, it's, uh, it's, can't remember which one. It's time, like it's a time they were living, but it's not like a, it's not like a single time. It wasn't a one-time thing. They lived there probably for years, right? Mm -hmm. it was ongoing. Okay, good. It's the imperfect because it it's a habitual action. Okay. So, Papa Oso, Mama Oso, y Bebe Oso. Un día, Mama Oso um, hizo. Why hizo? Uh, because just one time, one day. Right. I, lo I love these. Day. Yeah, I love when they give you a clue. Iso. Yeah. <laughs> Iso. Una uh, sopa de arroz con pollo. Y puso tres platos en la mesa. Okay. So we have here. These are also, it, they're, they're longer, but they are, it is a sequence too. Okay. So that is that's right. Is that right? Yes, that was right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. Put okay. three plates on the table. That's an action. Okay. Uh, como ya um, so fue. No? no, it's a time, right? Okay. Medio dia is noon. Uh huh. So is that a description or an action? Um, well, I'm not sure what como ya. I don't know the translation. Ah, this is just it's like it was already. Doesn't translate. Oh, it was exactly. already okay. So it's that is uh, okay. Como ya era. Mm -hmm. Medio dia. Because it's a time. So you're always okay. using the name perfect. Okay. Uh, los osos. Uh, um, se sentaron. They sat down, right? Sat down yes. once. Right. They weren't just sitting down over and over again. Right, right, right. Para comer, porque um, uh, tenían muchísima hambre. Yep, it's a description. It wasn't a reaction. They didn't become hungry, but they, they were hungry. Okay. Uh, uh, Papa Oso probó la sopa primero. Y uh, dijo, ay, la sopa está muy caliente. Mm -hmm. And that's again, that's like two, they're also in a row. Okay, yes. Because he tried it first and then he said. So it's technically it's a sequence too. Oh, got that. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay. So one, one and one. The sequence. Yeah, okay. even though they have like more detail than, uh -huh. than the little example I put, it's still, you have to think about it. He had to try it to know it was hot. Got it. Okay. Uh, entonces, Bebe Oso y Mama Oso. Um, this one is tricky because there's about five or six verbs that change their meaning. Okay. In the preterite and the imperfect. I don't know if you've seen these before, so I'm going to grab them. Mm -mm. Um, and whereas, for example, if you use poder in the preterite, that means that you were able to and you did. But if you use poder in the imperfect, that means you had the opportunity, but you never even tried. So these ones are very tricky. Uh, I think well, tell, what, run that by me again. I'm going to get you a great, a great chart right here. Oh, OK. OK, so these are the five. So if you use conocer in the preterite, it's when you meet someone. Because you can only meet someone one time. Mm -hmm. It actually makes sense why they do this, if you think about okay. it and the differences. 
you can only meet someone one time. I met them. That's what happens once in your life. After you meet them, you can't meet them again. Yeah, that makes sense. And then the imperfect was I knew someone. Think of all the people you knew in high school, you know, elementary school that you just don't know anymore because not because you don't like them, but just have right. different lives. So if you think about that, it does make sense. An action and a description. Poder. If you say pudimos, you were able to do it. So you, there was intent there. You, you tried it and you succeeded. Or if you say it negatively, you still tried to do it. Whereas mm -hmm. in the imperfect, you could do it, but you didn't. You know, uh, I could, I could have uh, moved to Chile, but I never tried to go to Chile. So this is more opportunity, but there was no action. Okay. Okay. Quiero, a uh, career. So um, when you wanted to do something and you try, it's kind of the same thing. You wanted to, but you tried to do it, you use career. Whereas if you wanted to do it, but there was no action, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to do a lot of things when I was little. I wanted to be a doctor. But I never actually did anything to become a doctor. That would be the imperfect. Got it. I like saber. I like this one. We, we, did you find something out? Because I feel like this is like scandalous. This, is, this comes up a lot with the family gossip. Okay. So I think this one's like really fun. I hear this one a lot because it's like, oh, el supo. You know, it's like dramatic. <laughs> um, so you found something out versus knowing all along. Do you see how it could help to think about action versus right. passive? Right, yeah. Right. That and makes then sense. There's, there's really, yeah. There's no action. There's no new action. Anyway. Right. It's just, it's just that background kind of you need to you know, first story, you need to know this, but it's been like this forever. And you just kind of need to put it in there for the storytelling aspect. Tener is a reaction. So I, I became cold. It's a reaction. So it has to be something happened. Like um, I put on the air conditioning and I became cold. Or I stepped off the airplane in Philadelphia and I became cold. <laughs> Whereas when you use it in the perfect, we were cold or I was cold is part of that overall description. You were cold before the story started. You were probably cold after. So it's like an ongoing thing. Exactly. It's ongoing, cold. passive, background information. It's not, it's not a one-day thing. This is something that, that people struggle with. My cousin just asked me for, for help with this the other day in her Spanish 2 course. It's just something that is ongoing okay and it's not that like if you said to me the wrong one or and to any native speaker you said the wrong one they would understand you they know what you're trying to say it's just a little grammar mistake like using lend instead of borrow uh-huh yeah. i heard to ask you how was your class because i didn't see you last week how was my with charlie oh it was great actually yeah, it was, it was great. A good it was very helpful um, okay. just to have that conversation. And actually, he was great and it worked out. It was wonderful. Did you understand him? He's, he speaks better than most people, I find. I did. I, a couple of times I asked him to the, talk more slowly. But, oh, yeah. Um, but yes, yes. And if right. I didn't, he was actually able to explain it, which was good. Yeah, it's good <laughs> because it's, it's when you go like abroad, it's hit or miss. Mm -hmm. Like, some people, you ask them to speak more slowly and they don't change one second and, and they're still talking. You're like slower. They just don't get it. <laughs> and then other people are just really naturally easier to understand. You know, they enunciate and people in the Yucatan for me were really difficult to understand. Huh. They just mumbled everything together in one stream. That's uh, so one of the things I have trouble with. I was, I met these kids from Nicaragua that we that my son taught met them last week and uh the problem is I can't tell where one word ends and where one word starts 
Let's see, we could do some listening practice. Um, I don't know if I ever told you about the listening websites, the one with the native speakers. I don't um, tell a lot of people about it because I find it's very, very difficult and it scares people. But for oh. you looking for specifically Nicaraguan, org, um, it would be very good. The reason I, I don't like it, I like it because it's very challenging, mm -hmm. but I barely get to use it because their beginner is not beginner at all uh, their beginner is a b1 what they think is beginner listening is just way too hard so i only get to use it like probably giving it to two students over three years um but you can search by country so for you it would be very useful uh -huh. get all the people from nicaragua hopefully because they uh -huh. have a mix of people uh -huh. um, even honduras um would help uh-huh I don't know if they have anyone from Nicaragua, but let's see. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, so don't take their levels. <laughs> don't take their levels seriously. Okay. But, uh, it looks like there's a good amount from Nicaragua. What I tell oh, people to do, because I don't like their order either. I'm weird. I'm very weird about stuff. <laughs> because I feel like you should go over the vocabulary before you watch the video. Right. For me, I would go over the vocabulary first. Make sure you understand that. Hide the transcript. Do the quiz on the vocabulary so you know what the words mean. Okay. Then I would go and, and watch the video without the transcript to challenge mm -hmm. yourself. And then I would rewatch it and open the transcript to make sure that, that you understand. Because there's going to be words you don't know. They use a lot of idioms. They don't, you know, they're speaking naturally. Um, sometimes there's words in here that I don't even know because it's something from Colombia that I've never mm. heard before. But I think for you, this would be great. Okay. So if you want to try it. No, that's a great, I, this is great. So it's SpanishListening.org. I'm going to send you the exact, okay. I was going to say if it were from YouTube, you have the option to slow down the, the speaking, but it's Vimeo. Okay. So these are all from Nicaragua, but you could also, I would also, if you go through these, go through Honduras, okay. El Salvador, they're going to have similar, but I mean, just listening to any of them, like I said, they're very challenging. Right. Oh, and then below there are some discussion questions. So after the video, you can go below. The way that I do my listenings are different because I like to point out and do them by level as like the tense, you know, what the majority of this is present tense, past tense, preterite. You'll notice they don't do that here. It's a mix. It's whatever comes out of their mouth. Okay. But then below they have some, um, just like questions and you click on them. There's an example answer. And then if you wanted to, just let me know and we can work with the questions as discussion. Okay. And you can okay. also hear the pronunciation of the questions and answers if you click here. Got it, okay. So it's useful, I just think it's a little out of order and I would probably, if it were me, I would probably have some kind of grammar explanation. Do that, yeah, that makes sense. Um, it's easier but, for me to understand if I know what they're talking about too. Right, like they have, just looking here, Vias, I'm looking, I'm seeing the subjunctive. So that might be frustrating to people if they don't know the subjunctive. Mm -hmm. But it is something that definitely comes out naturally all the time with native speakers. So it's good. Mm -hmm. You can let me know if there's something you don't understand, just copy it. Okay. Um, and we can go over it in class. Not a problem. Okay. Uh, if you just want to put the, the link there and then we'll go check it. Okay. But I think for you, it would especially be good. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Sorry. We were at, oh, okay. So did they want to try it and, and did they actually try it or, and this is two parts because we have career and we have full air. Was there uh, intent? 
Okay, so querían comer la sopa, sopa pero no uh, pudieran porque... Well, both of them are going to be the same. You're going to pick either preterite oh, okay. or you're imperfect because they're both about intent. Okay. Did they want to or could, could they? And they tried or they wanted to and they could, but they didn't try. Uh, okay, so they... It's hard. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Think of it logically, though, if somebody tried soup next to you and screamed that it was really hot, would you try it? Okay, so, uh, well, they wanted to try, so that's, but there's no, there's no action. They didn't try. Let's try that. The hmm. two are possible, but you have to make sure that you pick both, either in the preterite or the imperfect. Got I it. say imperfect because if I saw someone try soup and scream that it was hot, I wouldn't. Because yeah. it all came from the same place. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. So they wanted to. But, and it doesn't say here that they tried it. Okay. But no. Okay. So, so in this instance, they wanted to, but they weren't able to. It's not that they, that not that they. They could have. They, they could have. They had the soup in front of them, right? Right. But they didn't. But they didn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. If they had wanted to try it and they did try it, I would imagine there would be something here saying, but it was too hot. Yeah, you know, okay. You know what I mean? It was, there would be something saying, and it was just as hot as dad's, or they screamed out in pain. That's why I feel like it would be the imperfect. Got but it. But it's just missing, and missing the information that we need to know. Okay. But they, they pretty much always have to be the same. If you're talking about career and poder, it, uh -huh. they're in the same sentence about the same subject. They just have to be. Just have to be. Okay. Mm -hmm, Got consistent. It. Okay. Uh, porque estaba tan caliente como la sopa de papá oso. Yeah, it was warm. It was hot. It was an, that's a description. Mm -hmm. Okay. Los tres osos uh, dis Decidieron dar un paseo. Okay. Mientras uh, this is giving you a huge hint here. Do you know what mientras means? While, yeah. Okay. So it's ongoing. So while say and say enfriada la sopa. Yes, because the soup is getting cold or cooling off while they go for wow. a walk okay. and come back. Okay. Uh, era un día bonita del verano, uh, y, uh, así es sol. Yeah. This is good, right? This is like really yeah, good yeah, practice. Yeah, yeah, it makes me think, but, uh, yeah. I'm gonna, let me take a, a screenshot of it, because there's more, but how about we screenshot it, and I'll leave you the link. And there's more too. There's a couple parts to the story. Okay. Um, and then there's, a, I think, two Superman stories. So there's plenty of practice, but don't try to do them all in one day, right? Just like one story. It's okay. going to have your mind pretty occupied because it goes down. But if okay. you go back to that little checklist, if you want to copy that, you yeah. know, you don't have to copy that, just kind of copy the questions and you ask yourself, I think most of them will be pretty simple. Okay, so that's 19. But I've done this with a couple of people and there's more activities later on too. I love this website. I just wish that it does go over the stuff that people have trouble with, the poor and the para, the preterite and perfect. Um, I just wish there was more, that's all. I wish there was like so much of it because it's amazing. Right, yeah. Um, and I kind of wish, I might even, maybe I should recreate this. I wish that it wasn't Goldilocks. Or maybe I wish that the first one was something familiar, but then the other examples were somebody actually telling a story about their weekend. Right, because I kind of know what to expect. Yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. But that might be something fun for me to make. So let me see if I have time for that.
because I think that's just more realistic and you can relate to it. Yeah. But I'm going to put it here anyway. So oh, I have this great screen capture thing that captures the whole entire website. <laughs> so we get to have it here just for reference too. Um, in case, but I like that it tells you like why and that just drills it and you want to ask yourself before you answer, ask yourself, why am I picking this? Yeah. Just drill it into your head and it's going to make it so much easier. And then when we practice storytelling, you know, you really start off with the imperfect most of the time. If you think about it, when you start off telling a story, story is like you're telling a story over time. Yeah, you're set, you're going to set it up. You're going to say where you were, what it, the weather was like. And we could practice that too. Okay, why don't we practice since we're here anyway? Why don't we practice setting a scene? Just setting a scene in the imperfect, nothing more, no actions, just descriptions. Okay. Do you want me to give you an example? Okay. Yeah. So actually, um, well, this, okay, so this past weekend I went to a birthday party. Okay. Um, I could say El Sabado, era El Sabado. I've changed this font, don't worry. I can't, I gotta figure out how to just make this font not be the deep, the default font. <laughs> era El Sabado. Era un día caloroso, uh, caloroso en Veracruz, pero era fresco en Córdoba. We went to this other town. Okay. Fre fresco, ¿qué es fresco? Fresh, like Fresh. cool, you know. Cool. Okay. Good, good 15 degrees cooler. Uh -huh. um, I'm very nice. Uh, la casa era muy grande y afuera habían, uh, ay, ¿cómo se llaman? Habían no casa de campaña. Habían, I can't think of the word in English, where people put up those those kind of, they're not roofs, they're, you know, at the beach, they put up these. The cabanas? Yeah, but they're like, you know, that thin, that thin material, just like a, a gazebo, but not, it's not surrounded. It's yeah, not I think that's a, a cabana. Okay, uh, we'll say that. I don't, I mean, I don't know. Dos um, cabanas. Like not tents. <laughs> they're not tents. because They're not they're closed in. Tents. They're just those roofs. Habían mm. dos cabañas blancas y mucha gente. Uh, había niños, niños pequeños. Habían cinco mesas con muchas sillas. El pastel era blanco y rojo. Estaba en la mesa. This is all background. There's no action yet. Okay. So I'm just telling you about what I saw when I arrived. So mesa, what is what is that in this in this instance? Mesa, uh, the um, table. tables. There were five oh, okay. tables. With many chairs, I don't know how many chairs, but many chairs. Okay. Pastel, the cake. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, I could even say, y decía, feliz cumpleaños. Ah, uh, okay. Because it, it said it, but it's not actually saying it one time, right? It's just a description. Right. Y estaba en la mesa because it was on the table before I arrived and on the table the whole party, I'm going to use it in this way. If you think about this, when you arrive somewhere, like a wedding is a good one, or 
some kind of event. Just think about all the things that you see that were already there before you got there. It's, got it. it's pretty, it's easier to do it that way. So why don't you tell me, did you go, remember you went to, um, not wash, you went to Washington, of course, but you went to Virginia, right? Uh, a while ago, yeah. Or have you gone somewhere recently? It could be a restaurant. It could, it could be anything, really. Um, uh, yeah, I went to my dad's this weekend. Okay. Okay. So tell me about the day, the time. Okay. Uh, well, actually, it wasn't the weekend. It was, like, during the week. But, um, okay. <laughs> Era, um... Era el, um, um, uh, miércoles. Miércoles. Uh, era un día, um, uh, con mucho sol. Mm -hmm. In, uh, in, uh, in Pennsylvania. Oh, we still have Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. Donde? Uh, cerca de Lancaster. Okay. Pero, ¿cómo se llama? Uh, ella, ella, uh, vive en una farm. Ah, la granja. Okay, granja. So, uh, no es pueblo. No, no está pueblo. Granja. granja. It's just out in the country? Yes. Sí. Wow, cool. Yeah. So, uh, so um, the f actually, the farm would be great to describe. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, la, uh, 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 okay. Um, la granja, gran, granja, granja, granja is, um, uh, is uh era oh era 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 um um no era muy largo y no era muy uh pequeño es medio es era era, era mediano era mediano no, largo, no muy grande okay okay um era uh era uh una Un casa. Abia. Let's use there was. Okay. Abia, there was. Casa. Okay. Abia. Una casa. Y abia. Una. Um, or dos. Uh, how do you say barn? No tengo idea. But I will okay. find out. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> definitely the. Yeah. Uh, abia. Dos cosas. La, um, I feel like I probably know it because when I go to my in-laws, they had they used to have horses. Uh huh. But they're not barns, but those are stables. Establo or granero. Granero. Okay. Uh, Malasan. This is more for like a bodega, like a warehouse. Okay. okay. I don't. Mm, um, that's not the word I'm thinking of. There's one in my head, but let's go with Grand Harrow because that is coming from. I know there's something else I've heard, but that's fine. Grand Harrow is the closest to Grand Ha, so that's what I would go with. Okay. Dos Grand Harrows? Uh, sí, había uh, una casa y dos Grand Harrows. Okay. Grand Harrows. So I'm going to say Abiyan because we went to list oh. up more than one. So I'm going to have okay. to change that. Yeah, okay. Okay. In those kind of hairs. Uh, La Casa, or the, the, uh, those granjeros, est, um, estaban rojo? Eran, because it's permanent. Whereas estaba, we're going to use for location or something. Mm -hmm. It's not often, it's more going to be for location because something that's temporary likely wouldn't go. Okay. So even though you're setting the scene, it's, um, 
Oh, wait, yeah. Well, it depends. Okay. If you're talking about the people, like the kids were playing, like in the background. Uh -huh. or my dad was sick or my dad was angry. As a background, it could be a staba because he was angry before you got there. You know, he, we don't know the time limit, the time frame. That's why it's called imperfect. We don't know the exact time. Right. Okay. Um, but think of it as staba for location. Era is going to be for time okay. and adjectives. Asia is going to be for weather, even though you can use error, like we said, error on dia caloroso with an adjective. You could also say asia sol. Okay. It can be used for weather. Um, abia is abia or avian. There was, there were for just the existence of things. Okay. Trying to think of, you know, certain verbs tend to go into different tenses more than others. Okay. Tania, maybe? It's not that you got something, it's that, you know, something was there. You could say, La Granja Tania Caballos. I don't know, does it have horses? No, it has goats. Oh, um, Borrego? Okay. Borrego? I eat one of these barn animals in tacos, but I don't remember which one it is. I want to say it's Borrego. Ay, cabra. Okay, cabra. And ah, Chivo is the um, Guadalajara soccer team. I, sh I know this, but I don't know this. Cabra. You know the Chupacabra? No. The legend of, you never heard the legend of the Chupa? It's like Bigfoot. Oh, no, I didn't. Um, it's a uh, Chupacabra. It's a, it's not real. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it is. But it's an <laughs> animal that comes and eats the goats. And that's why they call it the goat sucker, literally. It eats goats. Huh. It's kind of like the Bigfoot of Mexico. So I do know this, but I'm not using goat that much. I'm never going to remember. And Chivo, <laughs> or Chivas, is also a goat and also the soccer team in Guadalajara. So we could say Tania La Granja Tania La Granja Tania. How many? Like a lot or a couple? Um, um, veinticuatro. Veinticuatro. Sí. Muy específico. Veinticuatro <laughs> cabras. <clears throat> Okay. What I'd like for you to do if you have time, it's like a homework. Yeah. Would be to keep describing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, obviously you can finish this and then, you know, another day, keep describing. And then mm -hmm. maybe try to start with some actions. So for me, like after my descriptive paragraph, I would probably start in with, you know, we arrived. Okay. a las cinco de la tarde. That's an action. I can give it a specific time. Um, fuimos a comprar un regalo para Dia de la Madre. Then I start in with my actions that are one time, okay. that are finished, that I can put a specific time on. Okay. Okay. All so right. if you want to use this checklist to help you because you can go back and you can look at this. Yeah. And you can okay, say, perfect. okay, did I describe a noun? No, let me go back and describe a little bit more. Did I talk about the weather? No, let, let me go back and talk about the weather. So this can also ha help you fill in Got it. some more details. And the more you do it, I, you know, it's gonna Okay, fill. so I can cover those and know how, know how they're each one's used. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good.
Yeah, I think, I, you know, I think that you can, you already have some knowledge of it. It's not overwhelming, is it? No, 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 not at all. Okay, good. I just don't want you to be overwhelmed, but I mean, obviously it takes time and practice, um, but we will practice it a lot and then it'll just be more natural. Perfect. Let me see if I can come up with some listening. I do have some listenings in the pot, in the perfect and the predator mixing those, but let me see if I can come up with some like storytelling. Okay. Um, but you try for this week. Why don't you try those ones with the uh, Nicaraguan people? And you okay. can let me know if they're too hard, if they're too much. You could, I'll give you my listenings that are much easier to understand. But okay. it depends on how you want to go. You know, some people like the challenge and some people get frustrated. Okay. Let me see how hard it is. That, that's great. Okay. But I'm even just reading, I think, the transcripts is going to be helpful too. Okay. That's great. Um, and then I will see you next week. Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. The chart is right here too for that okay. imperfect um, versus preterite. And then you can have the link for these activities, as many as you want to do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that link is, okay. That link is on that page. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Okay. So I'll see you next week then. All right. Thanks, Sarah. No problem. Hasta luego. Hasta luego.